Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our MVROC Basics video. I'm Rick Paulino, and I'm a Senior Technical Specialist at RioSense. Now, before I begin our presentation, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We're RioSense, and we are the market leader in small volume, high shear viscosity testing and fluid characterization. We were founded in 2001, and we are located near San Francisco in the Silicon Valley. Now, how RioSense differentiates itself from other viscosity uh, manufacturers is through our VROC technology, which stands for viscometer and rheometer on a chip. And so basically, VROC or VROC technology is a combination of MEMS or micro electromechanical system and micro fluidics. And how we measure viscosity is by controlling shear rate and by measuring pressure drop. And with these two parameters, we use a derivative of the Hagen Poisier equation where shear stress divided by shear rate gives us dynamic viscosity. And so how we control shear rate is by use of a positive displacement pump. And we also know the exact dimensions of the flow field. With those two parameters, we control shear rate. How we find shear stress is by measuring the pressure drop of the fluid as it passes over embedded sensors in the flow field. And so basically, as the fluid flows over the pressure sensors, there is a pressure drop, and the uh, pressure drop is proportional to shear stress. We're also able with our technology to calculate our squared values. And we do that by taking the pressure reading at each sensor and calculating the slope of the line. Um, with our technology, the R squared values typically for a, um, for a reading are 0 0.998 or better. Uh, an advantage of having R squared values is you could use these values to determine whether or not you have laminar flow. You could also use the R squared values as a way to determine whether or not you are testing at optimal conditions. So some applications um, in the biopharma field for our BROC technology are candidate selection. Um, with, with the viscosity measurements, you can screen many samples easily. And with VROC technology, you do that with minimal sample volume. Uh, viscosity is also a very good way to differentiate similar samples. Formulation. With viscosity, you can optimize formulation of sample and buffer. And with this information, you can begin to understand in the early stages what conditions are best suited for your samples. Um, having this information, you can also streamline your process by disqualifying poor candidates early on in your drug uh, product discovery. Uh, protein stability. You can use viscosity to determine which excipients are better at stabilizing your proteins. You could also use viscosity to track changes over time for long-term stability studies, as well as for determining accurate shelf life. We're also able to perform intrinsic viscosity studies. And with intrinsic viscosity, you can use that to calculate hydrodynamic radius. And you could also begin to see protein-protein interaction as your concentration increases. Uh, also with our technology, you have the ability to reach high shear rates. And with high shear rates, you can use that for injectability studies. You could use that to do um, calculations on injection forces. There are ways to also mimic the shear at the needle with this high shear capability. So some common formulation issues 
that are viscosity related are fill volume variability. If your viscosity and your pumping um, um, systems are not coordinated, then you may not have um, repeatability in terms of volume fill. Filtration issues also in manufacturing are directly related to viscosity. Um, high viscosity is also very painful if, you, if your application are injectables. And so having the ability to precisely control viscosity will lead to much less pain on injection. Also, you could use viscosity to determine injectability uh, forces. And so usually there is a cutoff in, in forces that you want to be below so that it's much easier to administer the medication. Also, molecular sizing can be difficult in complex molecules and viscosity gives you insight into the actual structure of your of your proteins. And so some of the specifications of uh, the MVROC are the sample volume of approximately 50 microliters. You have a very wide shear rate range from about 0.5 to 1.4 million inverse seconds. A uh, very wide dynamic range of 0.2 centipoise all the way up to above even 100,000 centipoise. Temper temperature range from 4C up to 70C. And we also have an added option where you can go up to about 105C. And you also have the added feature of, do, of the ability to do shear rate and temperature sweeps. A feature of our technology that is very um, I guess important is the is ease of use. Um, your measurements. Step one, you load your syringe with your sample. Step two, connect the syringe to the sensor chip. And step three, the sensor jacket is closed and secured into place. So some of the advantages of a syringe-based system is that it allows for very high repeatability because measurements are not dependent on how the sample is loaded. For example, in rotational systems like a cone and plate, sample loading is critical to repeatability. If the sample isn't loaded the same way each time, your repeatability can decrease. And so with VROC technology, sample loading is not dependent on the end user and so repeatability is much higher with our system and so once the sample is loaded you can begin testing and so this is an example these are screenshots of our software and our software is very easy to use and it is very intuitive. And so basically once your sample is loaded, the first step is to name your sample. In this case, it's IPA, an estimated viscosity, the estimated sample volume, and the syringe size that you're using. Once this is all inputted, then the run parameter section will be populated. And this gives you an idea of what your minimum shear rate and maximum shear rates are. Um, with our technology, because it is pressure driven, the optimal operational range is 5% to 95% of the maximum pressure that the chip can handle. And so I'll go over that in uh, the next couple of slides to go over that in a little bit more detail. So once these parameters are generated, then you can go into this section and input the shear rates that you would like to measure at. Uh, we have auto and manual modes for measurement time and pause time. And leaving it in automatic mode will populate these measurement times and pause times um, so that your measurements are in optimal conditions. Now, sometimes you also will want to do measurements with temperature control. And there are two ways that you can control temperature with our system. The first way is to actually put the temperature here 
in this temperature section by just putting in the temperature that you want. And once that temperature has been inputted, hitting start will, will initiate the, the temperature um, activation. We have a tab here, which is the temperature control and measurement advisor. By clicking that, you could also control temperature by setting the temperature set point. Um, the temperature has a minimum stability of 0.15 C and a stability win window length of three minutes. This can also be adjusted up or down depending on um, what your preferences are. But basically what this does is the system will not initiate viscosity testing until the stability of the temperature is 0 0.15 or better and has maintained that stability for three minutes. So that way, when you're doing your viscosity tests that are temperature dependent, you know that the temperature that you set it at will be the temperature that you'll be testing at. Once the measurements begin, then the data graph will, will automatically pop up on your window. And what's going on in this window is the testing done in real time. So this graph right here, the viscosity in millipascal seconds, will give you the, um, the graph of each individual viscosity measurement. And so if you notice, this line is green, whereas this line is not green. And this tells you when the viscosity measurements were made. Viscosity measurements are made every 0.2 seconds. And at the end of the run, all of these individual viscosity points are averaged out. I mentioned earlier that because our system is pressure driven, there is a optimal range of operation. And that optimal range of operation is between five and 95% of what we call full scale or the full or maximum pressure that the pressure sensors can handle. And this area right here will give you the percent full scale. And this is where you will want to operate in the five to 95% full scale range. Operating below 5%, um, the, that's not um, an optimal pressure range to operate at. And so repeatability may not be as high as we'd like. And you can also have noise that can interfere with the viscosity tests. Anything above 95% full scale, you run into an issue of damaging the chip. However, we have a safety mechanism where if the shear rates are too high for the um, uh, sensor and the pressures exceed the maximum that the pressure sensor can handle, there is an automatic shutoff. This gives you the temperature reading and we also have the ability, as I mentioned earlier, to measure Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. This tab will initiate the weisenberg rabinowitz correction factor. And that is displayed in our data graph section. So once the measurement is complete, you will get a summary of, of your viscosity test. And so this has important information like temperature, your flow rate, percent full scale, um, your shear rate. And then you also have two different, or you have two viscosity measurements, apparent viscosity and true viscosity. Um, when you click on the Newtonian and non-Newtonian um, tab, the corrected value will show up as true viscosity. Oops, let me go back one more. And so when you do a shear rate sweep to determine whether or not your sample is Newtonian or non-Newtonian and you are in the non-Newtonian mode, the true viscosity will be corrected for, which will be different than the apparent viscosity. Okay. So, Data can be saved in two formats, either in PDF 
or in Excel. And this is an example of a PDF saved data. So to summarize, what we like to say at RioSense is to work smart, not hard. With our instrumentation, you're able to, to calculate true viscosity or absolute viscosity and not indexed. Indexed viscosity instruments will vary from machine to machine. Um, variations can also cause issues if you're sharing information. True viscosity provides consistency. You also have the ability with VROC technology to measure non-Newtonian samples with the ability to precisely control shear rates. Um, with other systems, you may have to make assumptions or extrapolate. We also have the ability to mitigate costs with very small sample volumes with the MVROC 50 microliters minimum with the Initium 26 microliters minimum. And finally, with the ability to control shear rates, you can use this to model injectability applications, um, injection for studies, so you can really fully characterize your sample. And at this moment, I would like to thank some of our customers that have helped us throughout the years. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.